590 Radio On Demand. My name is Jerry Mitchell, and I can't tell you how happy I am, and I can't thank you enough for choosing to spend a little bit of your valuable time with me today. Um, don't forget, don't forget you can download Give God 90. It's a free application on your Apple or Android device. We pay for it so you don't have to, and that way you won't have to miss anything that we're doing. Uh, hopefully one of these days before long I will do begin to do some live things, and uh, you can interact and do all kinds of fun stuff that way. Um, if you like what you hear and you like what we see and you like what we're, we're all about, you can choose to support Give God 90. The easiest way to do that is simply to, to buy one or both of my books. And if you choose to, you know, buy a couple of more, give them away, you know, just, just throw it out there. Um, I, I don't push a lot of, of donation stuff here because I'd rather you do something. If you really want to support Give God 90, if you really, truly want to do that, go ahead um, but the best way, the, the absolute best way, is just to follow the Creator's instructions because that's what we're all about here. If I can get you doing that, you know what? That that's that's <laughs> that blessing will come back to me every time, every time. Don't forget, if you want, uh, you can check out messianicdelaware.org. I have some teaching on there as well, uh, and. Also, on Saturday morning, it'll be sometime between 11.15 and 11.30, uh, Hope Family Fellowship does a live Facebook. That's Hope Family Fellowship on Facebook. You can check them out. Um, there's some lively discussion on there every once in a while. Uh, you know, the, the title of last week's teaching that Rob did was Church. What is it good for? Kind of rem reminded me of the uh, 1970s song, uh, War. What is it good for? Um, and sometimes saying things like that can start a war. And that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm just that, that's the way my mind associates sometimes. What I wanted to to discuss today, I know I've promised to talk about marriage, but something happened the other morning, and and I want to I want to relate that to you because it struck me absolutely perfect. Um, I live not very far from the Atlantic Ocean, not very far from the Delaware Bay, so I. Walked over or went over to the bay. I drove over to the bay to walk on the beach, and um, I was walking on the beach. And as I, I was saying to someone else, I was holding a conversation with God, and that that's kind of not true. I was complaining. Okay, I'll, I'll be honest. I was complaining, and uh, one of the things that I was asking for is, you know, I, I need some more ammunition. I need another way to to, to convince people that they should be following your instructions, right? And, and I was looking at, at this, and on my way back to the, to the truck, I looked around, and all of a sudden I heard in my mind the, the, the passage of Job 38. And Job 38 uh, talks about asking the, the earth. When you're confused about something, you know, does God exist? Well, you ask the earth, speak to the earth, and it will tell you. And I'm like, what in the world speak to? Oh, why would I think of that at a time like this? And as I looked around, I, I noticed there were eight or ten other people there at that time. This was early in the morning. It was cold. And the wind was blowing, so everybody was bundled all up. Um, and quite honestly, the other people I looked at, they were alone. And I was alone. And I thought to myself, oh, that's what this is all about. Now I get it. The Almighty had answered my question before, you know, he, had, he was working on answering my question before I asked, like he does so often. And as I've said before, uh, our Creator has a very British sense of humor because my one granddaughter, her Bible memory verse for the week was out of Matthew, and it was, For the Father knows what you need before you ask. So, Everything just kind of came, come together, and I had so much information come to me all at one time that it was very difficult for me to, to, to decipher through it all. And you might still notice that I'm still working on some of that because I don't know if, I want to, if I'm explaining some of it just right as I go through this, but I really hope that you can get something out of what I'm about to say. As I looked around at these people, they're all bundled up. They are insulated against the cold weather and the wind. But they're all isolated from each other by distance. 
And as I looked at that, I th- this is a picture of the modern Christian churches. This is what the modern Christian church looks like. They are insulated, but they are not insulated with God's instructions. They are actually insulated from God's instructions. And Christians, here's where I'm going to make you mad. Many of the churches today, and I'm not talking about the individual people, I'm talking about the churches themselves, the denominations. Many of the denominations are insulated from God's instructions because the insulation they are actually using is their own traditions and their own doctrines. And when those traditions and doctrines are different from what the Bible tells us, you have insulated yourselves, churches, not people, you have insulated yourselves from God's word from God's instructions and I'm looking at that and I'm thinking that's absolutely what I'm looking at here when I see all these people bundled up they've got all this stuff around them but they are insulated not to to protect themselves so much from the cold but to protect themselves from feeling cold do you see the difference there and and I know that's kind of hard to explain So let me try it this way. If we were to use God's instructions as insulation from the world, we would not have to isolate ourselves from the world. See, there's an insulation, isolation thing coming in here. If, If we are to be live in the world, we must be insulated against the things of the world that will harm us. And insulation... Uh, it does just that. It, insulation on electric wires is designed to keep us from being electrocuted. We can also consider insulation as you know, as it, it stops the transfer between two things. You know, the insulation on the electric wire stops the electricity from entering our body if we grab the wire. The insulation in our homes stops helps stop the transfer of cold. To inside our house or heat from the outside to inside our house in the summertime. If you look at a, a old fashioned cooler, just, just an old ice chest, it had insulation in it and it stopped that transfer from one side of that insulation to the other. When we use our Creator's instructions, when we follow our Creator's instructions, we are insulated from the sin of the world. We can see it. We know it's there. We simply are insulated from it. So we, we, by following his instructions, we keep it from harming us. And by following his instructions, because that worldly influence isn't harming us, we then are protected. So insulation can, can be good and it can be bad. Because if you use the wrong insulation, what's going to happen? Either you're not going to have enough, or you're going to be insulated against the wrong thing. And the churches that are denying God's instructions have chosen to insulate themselves from God. Let me say that again. The churches who have have said, no God, we don't need your instructions. We have our traditions. We have our church doctrine. Those churches have insulated themselves from their creator. They're depending on their own systems to keep them safe. They're de- and that's why they feel the need to be isolated. Now, you know, when we isolate something, we can isolate something a couple of different ways, can't we? We can isolate, uh, you know, we, we often think of it in prisons, where if, if someone in prison does something bad in prison, well, they're taken out of general population or put in isolation. If someone is sick when they go to the hospital, if they are so sick they can't be around anybody else, they'll put them in an isolation ward. They'll quarantine them there. So we stop that transfer uh, in, in the prison of a person doing bad things. In a hospital setting, in a medical setting, we stop that transfer, hopefully, of virus or bacteria or some disease that may be... Uh, transferable to other people so that's that's isolation versus insulation and i get this idea from what i saw because as i looked around that morning 
it, it just struck me so absolutely perfect. We insulate ourselves and we comfort ourselves in our tradition and in our doctrine. But we're still isolated from the world. We're still isolated from each other. But, but when we insulate ourselves from the world by following God's instructions, we have no need of isolation. We can walk through the world and we can do these things because we have His protection. We have His insulation. We don't have to depend on our insulation that is our traditions and our doctrines. You know, in, in Mark chapter 7, you show a Jesus, he, I mean, just derails the tradition and doctrine concept of men. He says, it, they are empty, they are useless, they are worthless. And when I see churches promoting their own traditions and their own doctrine over the Bible, it's terrible. It really is. And there are, unfortunately, churches out there that do that. Hopefully you're not part of that. Hopefully you're involved in a church where you are being taught to follow the Creator's instructions, where you are uh, hopefully uh, being advised that you don't need to be afraid of the world if you're being insulated by the Almighty. Now, what I am not saying is that you need to go find the most dangerous part of the world and, and go there and test this. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is that you can find some comfort that when you're following the Almighty's instructions, you don't need to fear going to the grocery store. You don't need to fear going to school. You don't need to be afraid uh, driving down the street in, in your neck of the woods, so to speak. I'm not telling you to go to some far off nation because you have God's protection. That's not what I'm saying. Even though the people who are called to do that, they do have that protection. But not everyone is called for that. Not everyone is told uh, you know, to, to be uh, a missionary or to be this or to be that. Not everyone is called to be a police officer. Not everyone is called to be a doctor. We all have the skills that the Almighty gives to us individually. And when we follow His instructions, we use those skills to benefit the people around us. And therefore, we are benefited by that. We, because we benefit and bless others, we are benefited and blessed in return. You know, one of the things that I call God math is... is God has a big basket, and he puts this big basket of, of things in front of you, your skills. And you keep using and giving these skills away. And you keep throwing them out and keep throwing them out, and you think, one of these days, I'm going to get to the bottom of this basket. Well, God math says, no, you're never going to get to the bottom of the basket because I'm just going to keep filling the basket up. And you can't give the stuff away fast enough, okay? That's how God math works. You give away as much as you can give uh, as much of God as you can give away and and you just keep getting more in return because your basket can fill up faster than you can give it away when we insulate ourselves away from God and we surround ourselves with our traditions and our doctrines we stop God math we stop giving God away we stop giving God the things that we are designed to give him we stop giving the people around us the things we are designed to benefit them with. You know, if, if a doctor who has every set of skills that, that the person needs to, to heal any disease, and he's giving this away and giving this away, now he may, he's going to be compensated for it, right? He's going to get, he's going to get something for it. He's, he gets his back. Think about what happens if he just stopped all of a sudden. If he just moved to the most remote place he could think of in the world. How is he then going to receive any benefits? How is he going to be blessed? If he goes and isolates himself, if he puts himself in isolation, how can he be blessed or she, as the case may be? How can that person be blessed if they isolate themselves? There was an interesting question come up at Hope Family Fellowship that said, um, 
can, I can't remember exactly how it was worded, something like, can God's instructions be accomplished if you are completely by yourself? And the answer is no, because it, to, to, when you take it down to that level, if you're by yourself, if you're the only person in the world or in the universe or in, in, in anything, how then is it possible for you to love something that doesn't exist? How is it possible for you to steal something uh, when you own it all? How is it possible to murder someone who doesn't exist? How is it possible to do these things? So to follow God's instructions... You must be around people. You must not isolate yourself. There are some uh, some phobias that people have. And one of the phobias, I don't remember the name off it of the top of my head because I just thought of it, is the fear of being around other people. And, and these folks isolate themselves. They don't even want to walk out of their door of their house. They, they don't have relationships with people. They have isolated themselves and made it impossible, and I mean just absolutely impossible, for God to benefit them. And the only way they're going to receive benefit is, is when they have some type, some type of interaction with other people. That may be the local church offering prayers for that person. It just depends, okay? There's lots of ways to interact with somebody who doesn't want to be interacted with. Um, you know, just ask my dentist. I, I, I don't like going to the dentist. She's a wonderful person, and, and she made the comment the last time, you know, when you came in here, you were really, first time you came in here, you were really nervous, and you didn't like me working on you. And I said, well, I still don't like you working on me. I, I just, strange you know, sitting in a chair while a stranger that you barely know sticks sharp objects in your mouth, not my favorite place to be. I tolerate it. I, just, I don't enjoy it. And, and that, I think, must kind of be how some of these people feel when they have to go out. You know, these, these, these self-made isolationists who never want to go out, they, don't, they barely open a door because they're terrified of the outside world. They don't they don't want to associate with the people that are out there. They don't want people uh, in their vision, in their, in their way of their looking at it, they don't want the sharp objects that people have to offer sometimes. And, it, and that's kind of sad because we look around and there are a lot of w- really wonderful people who have a lot to contribute to society who simply won't because they are terrified of being hurt. They don't understand that it is the instructions from our Creator that prevent that. Even when people want to to make fun of us and slap us around, and, and even if they choose to kill us, if that's the worst thing they can do in this world, we got it made. And I'm not saying, you know, go volunteer for this. What I'm saying is, if that's the worst thing they can do, if that's the absolute worst thing that they can think of to do, my Creator can overcome that. My Creator has far more to offer that is good and wonderful and every other positive thing thing you can think of. It far exceeds. His glory and His wonder far exceeds the worst evil act that per, that people can think of. Okay? So use God's instructions to insulate yourself from those things in the world, but don't isolate yourself from the world. Unfortunately, I see a lot of churches today, and I'm going going to do some denomination bashing here. I'm not going to tell you which denominations they are, though. But I'm going to to bash some doctrines and and some traditions. There's some churches that I know of very close by to where I live who choose not to evangelize they 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 won't even advertise in the paper because they are so comfortable with the members that they have that the, their little group that they associate with they're so comfortable with that they don't want any interference see they have their own way of doing things they like what they do they don't want any outside influence they don't even want any divine influence and that's a scary thing. That's a really scary thing. 
When you say, no, God, we got this. We're good. We don't need you. Um, ladies and gentlemen, they've got a lot to answer for. And, and Lord, help them. Lord, help them. Because they need it. But when you choose, when you make the choice to deny your creator and to deny your fellow man, that is extreme isolationism. You don't want anything to do with God. You don't want anything to do with people. You will go and meet in your own little group and call it good. Hey, more power to you, I guess. But, but you know, when push comes to shove, you know, they cannot be complete isolationists because they don't have everything they need to do to accomplish that. You know, they still have to get up and go to work of a morning. They still have to get up and go to school of a morning. They still have to have uh, repair work done on their buildings. They still have to have, they have to interact with people to some degree. But at the same time, they are more comfortable. They would much rather be in their own little group their own little clique, so to speak. And I've seen this in, actually in churches, you know, where you have one group, in, in a, and this isn't in a large church, this is in, in a church of only about three or four or 500 people, where you have one group of 10 or 15 that, that will do this, and one group of 10 or 15 that will do that, maybe 20 or 30 over here that does this. There might be 40 or 50 if it's something fun. But to get all of that together for a, a function, or to get all of those folks together and get them to agree uh, to change a light bulb, oh, it's a battle. It is a battle. Because they choose to be isolated. They choose to be isolated, but they're isolated in their own little group. You know, you, you cannot... You, there's very little room in God's kingdom for individuals because everything is based on community. Uh, you you have to to be- choose to belong to the community if you are going to benefit from God's instructions, because He doesn't give you the things you need to help yourself. He gives you the things you need to help someone else. It's kind of like being married. If you come home and 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 it's been a tough day. I mean, it's been a tough day, and you are just at your, at, you know, the last nerve you've got, somebody's still chewing on, okay, and it's about to break. And you know when you walk through that door and your wife's going to be smiling, your husband's going to be happy, or you're, you're the person that you love the most in the world. They're going to be standing there, and you have to walk in there and, and, and put a smile on your face. I'm going to give you a secret. I'm going to give you a secret. The Almighty knows what you need, but He's not giving it directly to you. You know who gave it to? The person on the other side of the door that you're getting ready to walk through. He's going to give it to your husband. He's going to give it to your wife. And when you walk in there, it's their job to give it back to you. Because that's how God math works. Marriage isn't 50-50. It's 100-100-100. It's 100% husband, 100% wife, 100% God. And when you think God's all in and you can't give your 100%, he's going to reach around from somewhere. He's going to give it to your spouse and they're supposed to give it to you. Now, where many wars start in a Christian marriage is when one spouse thinks, oh, I got an extra 20% here. I can hang on to this. No, you don't hang on to it. You give it where it's supposed to be. You want to start a war, you keep that extra 20% that the Almighty gave to you to give away because if you don't give it away um, well that's a whole nother, whole nother story I'm not going to go there right now but what I'm saying is you have to use what God gives you to bless the people next to you to bless the people around you so that you in turn can receive that blessing you can't insulate yourself from God well you can if you choose to I don't recommend choosing to I recommend instead choosing to use God's instructions and isolate yourself, keep yourself safe from the rest of the world. Because when we do that, then, then we can walk in this world, we can live in this world and not fear it. We don't have to be afraid of it. We don't have to worry and wonder what's going to happen next 
because we know that the Creator who gives us this life has it under control. I, I come through this, and I know this has been a little confusing, and it's kind of gone back and forth, but I hope in, in all this back and forth and in all this talk of isolation versus insulation and using insulation and isolation properly, I hope you can understand where I'm coming from, what I'm talking about, where it's going. And as you look around, as you choose to look around, even if you live in a warm climate, even if it's summertime in the hottest part of the year, you can see people who have chosen to insulate themselves or isolate themselves. You can see it. I'm always amazed at the things that the Almighty chooses to reveal to me. And He says, now you pass this information along. Because sometimes, and, and this, is, this is sad, this is really sad, there's people out there who think like I do, who are going to understand this. And there's people out there who don't think I, I, like I do, who are going to be saying, what is He talking about? But if you stuck with me this long, I think you have seen the difference. I think you understand, I hope you understand, that when we use God's instructions to isolate our, to insulate ourselves, we don't need to be isolated. But when we use our traditions and our doctrines to insulate ourselves from the Almighty, and we remain isolated from the world, that's when we're in trouble. That's when we are drastically going to be wondering why. So I encourage you, once again, follow the Creator's instructions. Do the things you need to do to improve your life. And it all starts with simply opening the Bible and saying, you know, I see some good results from what this person did. I'm going to follow that person. I'm going to do exactly what that person did. So now... I'm going to stop babbling. I'm going to stop uh, harassing you when, with, with that. And end this, and I really hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week.